Amen. All right, the part of the chapter that I want to focus on is we'll begin reading in verse number 20 where the Bible says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Now specifically, verse 21, he says, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker, partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Now, here in the United States of America, it has become acceptable for people to go out one day a year, one night of the, one night of the year, and openly and professingly and publicly, just for a joke supposedly, partake of the table of devils and dress up like devils. And the title of my sermon this, not, uh, this morning is Halloween, the holiday from hell. And I'm going to be preaching about the subject of Halloween and how wicked Halloween is. And a lot of people see, I, and I'm not, this sermon is not directed at unbelievers. And this sermon is not directed at the world. Because Gentiles oftentimes in the Bible... Is, is speaking about the majority. It's speaking about the rest of the world. He's not speaking to the Gentiles, though. He's speaking to the Christians, telling them not to be partakers of the Gentiles, you know, sacrifice unto devils, not to partake of the devil's sacrifice. And there's an increasing number in the United States, year after year, where more and more professing Christians, obviously a lot of them are phony Christians, but more and more fundamentalist Christians, more and more real saved believers are trying to justify the fact that they go out and they take part in the celebration of Halloween. Now I'm going to have you turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 verse 14. And let me, let me make my position very, very clear about what I believe about the celebration of Halloween. If you're going out trick-or-treating, you are celebrating Halloween. If you've been invited to some sort of, you know, you know, Halloween festival or Halloween, you know, party or a work party where people are dressing up and they're doing, you know, the, all the, the same festivities that would take place, you know, for something for Halloween. You are celebrating Halloween. What you are doing is you are partaking of the of the cup of devils. That's what you're doing. You're partaking of the table of devils. And the Bible over and over again talks about how Christians are supposed to live a separate life. And how Christians are supposed to be different than the world. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 14. We're going to look at a few passages on this subject first before we really get into the meat of the sermon. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Now watch this. And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Turn to 1 John chapter number 2, verse 15. So we see a very clear commandment. He says, number one, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But then he gives more, more specifics to that down below that. He's, he gets more specific. He says, for what fellowship? So he gives you the word fellowship. Then he tells you down again down at the bottom, wherefore come out from among them, and he says, and be ye separate. Look at 1 John chapter number 2, verse number 15. 1 John chapter number 2, we'll look down at verse number 15. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Turn to Romans chapter 12. We're going to blow through a couple of verses here. Romans chapter 12. So again, the very first passage we looked at, 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. The Bible is telling us to, that we should be separate. He said the words, come out from among them and be ye separate. Then just now he's telling you, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. There should be a difference in the way that you live your Christian life than the way that the world lives. If you're saved, you should not be living and doing and practicing the same things 
that an unsaved person believed. And, he, and you know, he used a lot of different terms synonymously. He said light and darkness. And then he said Christ and Belial. And then he said the temple of God. And he said in idols. So all these things fall into the same category. So light and Christ. Look at Romans chapter number 12, verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Watch verse number 2, the first statement. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And some backslidden Christian is going to hear a sermon that's preached on a subject like this, and they're going to try to still justify because because that's where the real problem comes in. Not only are you sinning, and not only are you you know saying you want to participate in this type of activity, or you want to go out and partake of the table of death because that's what you're doing. But when you try to stand there and you try to justify it, and people say, you know, we go out trick-or-treating. I take my children out trick-or-treating, you know, but we don't dress up like them. You know, we're, we're, what we're doing is just a little bit different than what they're doing. We're still separate is what they're saying. And that's not what that means when it says be separate. It tells you the definition of the world. It's that the word. It's not just telling you, hey, you can go to the same place as them. You can live the same lifestyle as them as them, but you just need to do this one little thing differently. No, he said, come out from among them. That means you shouldn't be around these type of people in situations like that. Amen. That means when they're partaking of the table of devils, you shouldn't be present. And that's what's going on with Halloween. It's a worship of Satan. It's a holiday from hell. It's a holiday where people are literally, whether you know it or not, you think the Gentiles, when they were offering their, their sacrifice unto idols, were all, you know, all the Gentiles that were doing that all over the world were just aware of the fact that what they're offering up is to Satan? Now, there are people in the Bible who knew that they were worshiping Satan. But a lot of the people that were Romans and Greek and Greeks, a lot of those people, yeah, were wicked people. They were evil people. But I guarantee they weren't positive that they were just sacrificing unto, uh, um, unto devils when they were sac sacrificing under their idols. And that's exactly what these people are doing, whether they know it or not. They're celebrating a holiday that is from hell. They're celebrating a holiday that is from Satan, a satanic holiday. Now, I'm going to prove that from the Bible, so there will be no question about this when I'm done. Turn to John chapter 3, verse number 18. John chapter 3, verse number 18. And he told them not to be partakers of the table of devils. And what does it mean to partake in something? It means to participate. It's the same thing. It comes from a, They're the same root words there. It means to participate. And if you are participating in Halloween in whatever way, you are partaking of the table of devils. Amen. Look at John chapter 3, verse number 18. John chapter number 3, verse number 18. The first thing that's wrong, let me say this first, my first point, the first thing that's wrong with Halloween is that it is a holiday. If I had to pick one color to describe Halloween, if there's one color, it would be black. That is the color that describes Halloween. And a person can say, well, maybe it's, maybe it's black and it's orange. Oh, Brother Elliot looked at my tie just now. My wife said something when I put this on this morning. She said, are you celebrating? She knew what my sermon was about. She said, are you celebrating Halloween today? I'm not celebrating Halloween. It's just a coincidence. But if I had to pick one color, it would be black. That's the color that, that you know, that's the theme, the color theme of Halloween. And a person would may try to argue. That's something, you know, a point that I thought of before I, when I wrote this sermon. A person may try to argue. What about orange? The only reason why orange is even in the mix is because of the time of the year that the holiday falls. If, if Halloween was on a different time of the year, if it was in spring, it'd be like green and black. Go around and go to these different stores. Go to Walmart. Go to Fry's. And just take a peek down the seasonal aisle where they set up all the stuff right when you walk in on Premiere normally. Right when you walk in on the Premiere section, it's not orange. is not the primary color, my friend. These kids are not going around in orange costumes. That's not what they're dressed up in. That's not the main color that they're wearing. Go take a look at people's homes. They don't, you know, just dress their home in array and decor their home in orange. They dress their kids up in black. When people want to dress up and they want to go out to Halloween, what time of the day do they want to go out? They want to go out when it's dark out. They want to go out, you know, to a haunted house where what? They turn all the lights off. Do you know a theme of Halloween is darkness? It's the color black. Look at John chapter 3, verse number 18. 
It says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> Verse number 19. <clears throat> and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, talking about himself, Jesus, Jesus Christ. And men loved darkness rather than light because, the reason, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Turn to Job chapter number 30, verse number 26. <coughs> The type of people that love darkness are, are evil, sinful people. People, they like to be in darkness so that they can hide their wicked deeds. The same type of people that love darkness are the people that hate light. They're the same type of people that hate Jesus Christ. And the same type of people that rejected Jesus Christ when He came onto this earth. Look at Job chapter number 30. Verse uh, number 26. <clears throat> Job chapter number 30, verse number 26. We're going to see a theme over and over again here. Or a, uh, a consistency. Job chapter number 30, verse number 26. It says, When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And watch this. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. So over and over again we see that good is used synonymously or interchangeably with with light. And then you see evil is used synonymously with darkness. And why would someone, if they're going to, they didn't pick the color black because it's pretty. That's not why Halloween just selected the color black. Hey, this is just going to be our theme over time. It wasn't one person. It's just because what spiritually, because it had, there's a spirit to the holiday. There's a spirit to things. And spiritually, this particular holiday has a satanic spirit to it. It has a spirit of darkness. It has a spirit of blackness. Turn to, uh, look at this again. Turn to Isaiah chapter number 5, verse number 20. We'll see this over and over again. Light represents good in the Bible. Light represents Jesus in the Bible. Darkness represents evil. Darkness represents Satan. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter number 5, verse number 20. This is a real famous verse. Isaiah chapter number 5, look at verse number 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. So notice he repeats himself and he says evil and good, light and darkness, showing good is synonymous with light and darkness is synonymous with evil over and over again. The end of the verse says that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. And all of these Christians that would hear a sermon like this and they were to get angry and they bristle, those type of people are the same people that this is talking about. They're trying to say, well, you know, when we celebrate the holiday, it's not bad. It's a satanic holiday. The holiday, the purpose of the holiday is for people to dress up in black costumes. People to dress up in dark costumes. People to dress up like evil, wicked characters. Serial killers. Ghosts. That all type, and you know, one thing I'm going to point out in my sermon here, because we're going to go through all of these famous, all these, you know, these well-known characters that people love to dress up like. There's something in common with every single one of these characters. And if you think that this is a coincidence, you are a complete idiot. Every one of the characters that people dress up like throughout Halloween, every one of them, the main act that they perform is something in the Bible that's not only bad, it's disgusting. It's something in the Bible that God says it's, a, it's an abomination. It's something in the Bible that God strongly condemns. The act that the, all of these different characters would do, would do. Now turn to Matthew chapter 6 verse number 23 and we'll see this one more time. But that's what these types of Christians are trying to do. They're trying to put light for darkness. They're trying to put darkness for light. They're trying to say, you know, we're, we're celebrating this holiday, which is a holiday from hell. They're trying to say, we celebrate this holiday, but it's a good holiday when we do it. For us, you know, we don't do anything wicked. We don't do anything sinful. Other people dress up, but, you know, we don't. Look at Matthew chapter number 6. We're going to see this one last time. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 23. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 6, look at verse number 23. He says, but if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee... Be darkness, how great is that darkness? Turn to Job chapter number 3, verse number 5. 
<clears throat> something that is inherently sinful or inherently wicked, you cannot make good. People see, there's nothing wrong with celebrating a holiday. We're not Jehovah's Witnesses. But when the holiday it causes you or you have to, in order to celebrate the holiday, you know, you have to partake of the table of devils, then there's no way to celebrate that without partaking of the table of devils. That's what it consists of. That's what the holiday is. Look at, back at Job chapter number 3, verse number 5. We're going to look at a few verses here in, in the book of Job. Job chapter number 3, verse number 5. <clears throat> Job chapter number 3, verse number 5. <clears throat> Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. Notice the word black, like the color black is used there in the same verse with darkness. But also, look what else is used in the verse. He says, let the darkness and the shadow of death Stain it. Look over at Job chapter number 10, verse number 21. We're only going to look in one book here and watch. Look at all of the consistency with the word when we see darkness used each time. Job chapter number 10, verse number 21. Over and over again. Watch this. Job chapter number 10, verse number 21. Before I go whence, I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. Look over at Job chapter number 12, verse number 22. Job chapter number 12, verse number 22. <clears throat> Job 12, 22, it says, He discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. Turn to Proverbs chapter number 8, verse number 36. So over and over again, when he's talking about darkness, when he's talking about blackness, he's also talking about death. <clears throat> Look at Proverbs chapter number 8, verse number 36. Proverbs chapter number 8. Look at verse number 36. This is this what it's speaking about, right? Because I've heard people try to accuse, <clears throat> accuse people that, that use this verse in the way that I'm getting ready to use it to say that they're using it out of context. Now, wisdom is personified in the Bible. Wisdom is given like it has a personality or like it's a person. Yeah. But you know what the Bible says when God's speaking in the book of, book of Proverbs? You know, it talks about that. It says, out of his mouth cometh understanding. Out of his mouth cometh wisdom. So when wisdom's speaking, do you know who it is? It's God speaking. Right. That's who it is. Look at verse number 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Talking about wisdom. Talking about God. Watch what it says next. All they that hate me love death. Halloween is a holiday from hell, number one, because it's a holiday that celebrates darkness. Why? Because the people that like the holiday the most are wicked, evil people. And the Bible says that sinful people hate light and they love darkness because their deeds were evil. They love blackness. And that's the color of the holiday. That's the theme of the holiday. Number two, in the overall theme, even more so than what the color is, and they, they both go hand in hand. The whole purpose of, of the holiday is to just glorify death. It's to glorify death. That's all it is. All the characters all have to do with death. Turn to Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 4. Over and over again. And you know, it's, it's funny that when we saw over in John chapter number 3, it talked about those that hated light, right? Those that hated light, that they loved darkness, right? And who did, what did light represent? It represented Jesus. We keep seeing all these different characteristics of the type of person that hates God, the type of person that hates goodness, you know, the type of person that, you know, loves darkness. Over and over again. Then we see here the same type of person, you know, that hates God is a person that loves death. And isn't it a coincidence that the holiday, Halloween, is a, it, the, the main two things, if you had to point out two characteristics of the holiday, it's darkness and it's death. The two points of it, those are the main attributes of the holiday. Whatever you think about it, those are the main attributes. That's a fact. Those are the main attributes of the holiday. So what would a Christian be doing celebrating a holiday that the same two attributes that the person that hates God has, that's the same two main two attributes of a holiday uh, that, uh, that glorifies death and glorifies, you know, uh, Turn to Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 4, that glorifies death and glorifies darkness. 
And if I haven't been clear already, which I feel like I have been, if I haven't already been clear enough, if you are partaking in this holiday, you are sinning. Amen. Let me say that. If you are partaking in this holiday, you're not right with God. Amen. You need to repent and you need to stop partaking of the table of devils. If I haven't been clear enough already, because people try to justify this all the time, and it's real annoying. You know, it, it, it really gets on my nerves when Christians know that it's wrong. It's, I don't care what you, what you say to me. I know in your heart, if you're a Christian and you read the Bible, you know that it's wicked. You know that it's evil. You know that, you know, what the holiday is about. You know the purpose and you know the reason that get, the, why people get excited about it and everything is because it's darkness and because it's wicked and it's evil. Look at Genesis chapter number 9. Verse number 4. And, and, and here, let me say one more thing real quick before we read this too. One last statement. Even if you're going out, just besides the point that the whole holiday is wicked and evil, let's say if a person tries to say, you know, a person tries to say, well, my kids aren't dressed up bad. That's the theme of the holiday though. So when you go out trick-or-treating and you take your kids out, do you know what your kids have to look at? Do you know what your kids have to see? And I'll say this. My daughter, you know, she's homeschooled. We try to, like, we try to protect our children. People act like it's a bad thing. Like, oh, you shelter your kids. A shelter's meant to protect. You know, that's a good thing. I protect my children. When my children, my daughter sees gruesome images, and she sees these images of death and skeletons and wicked, evil things that look like a bunch of demons and devils, she acts frightened and scared. That's normal. So if your kids, if you're able to take your kids around and just like, you know, you guys go and, 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 and trick or treat and your kids are fine and they're just numb to looking at all this, that's not good. That's not right. There's something wrong with that. That's not normal. I don't care if every child in the United States lives that kind of life. That's not right. Your children should not be just, you know, just completely, it should not be just normalized for your child to just look at just death and gruesome and blood and wicked, evil things that are just, you know, and, and the Bible says not to set, to set no wicked thing before your eyes. So you shouldn't be doing it for that reason, period. Yep. Look at Genesis chapter number 9, verse number 4. <clears throat> the Bible says, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely... Surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. Look at Leviticus chapter number 7, verse number 26. So right here he just gives you a commandment. But he, he, doesn't, he doesn't necessarily stress the seriousness of the command. So like I said, all of these things that are mentioned, like obviously right now, you know, what, what's, what, what is a vampire? What is a vampire known for? You know, he's known for the main thing. If I could say, you know, tell me one thing to describe a vampire. If playing some kind of charades game or something. Right. You know, he, would, he eats blood. That's what he's known for. Isn't that just a coincidence that somebody just chose a character and the main thing that he does is go, goes around and he eats blood? That's just a coincidence. It has nothing to do with the fact that the Bible condemned this thousands of years ago, but they just end up choosing a character. But these people don't love darkness. They're not just like completely being in, in, in defiance to God's word. There's no possible way of that, right? Look at Leviticus chapter number 7, verse number 26. Moreover, you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beasts in any of your dwellings. Now watch how serious this is. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Turn over again, look at Leviticus chapter number 17, the same book. Leviticus chapter number 17, verse number 10. So it's so serious that if you were to eat blood, God says that you're cut off from among your people. You're not allowed to dwell with the congregation. You're not allowed to dwell with the children of Israel. Look at Leviticus chapter number 17, verse number 10. We'll see it one more time. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter number 17, verse number 10. And whatsoever man be, and whatsoever man there be of the house of the Israel, of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood. Watch. And, and will cut him off from among his people. When he says, I will set my face against him, he's saying he's become your enemy. 
When you do something like that, you're opposed with God. And these saved Christians, you know, these saved believers, they want to dress up their children of a character that is literally at enmity with God. They want their children, they think it's funny to put their child in an outfit of, of an enemy of God. Someone that God is opposed to. Someone that God, that God says that if you do this, I'm going to cut you off from among the people. You're not going to be allowed around the children of Israel. Turn to Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 12. Exodus, we'll look at another character. The first one is vampires. <clears throat> look at Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 12. <clears throat> Exodus, and, what, and <clears throat> about the glorif glorification of death, what goes along with that? All the characters pretty much fit into that category in the first place. Because that's what's being represented by when people, when there's all this blood and stuff, it's, be, it's, it's supposed to trigger in your mind the thought of death. That's what's supposed to bring up in your mind in the first place. What are zombies? What are mummies? People dress up like those all the time. That fits into the same category of the glorification of death. I believe a vampire, I'm not positive, maybe somebody can correct me, but I believe that, that a vampire is supposed to be dead in the first place, right? And that's how they get their life back, basically, is just by sucking other people's blood out. You know, this stuff is all of it. All of it centers around a glorification of death. That's all that it is. Look at Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 12. Exodus chapter number 21, verse number 12. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall surely be put to death. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 10. He says, shall surely be put to death. And who are some of the most famous characters that all the kids are just dying to dress up like? Who are some of these most famous characters? People like Freddy Krueger. People like Michael Myers. You know, people like Jason. And what is their job? And look, listen to me real quick. Think about this in your mind. These guys are not hated. They're not even really the villain anymore. These, when these guys and these characters, yeah, they go around hacking people up, but the people that watch these films, they look up to those people. They look up to those characters. Do they dress up like the people getting cut up in the film? They're not, they're not the people that are exalted in the movie. They don't dress up like the, like, the, the, like the guy in the very beginning of the film that gets killed. That's not who they're dressing up like. They're dressing up like, like the villain. They're dressing up like the person you know, that's going around and, and, and killing everybody. This isn't something that's funny with, to God. God doesn't think it's funny. He said, if you kill someone, you shall surely be put to death. God says that these people shall be cut off from among their people. They shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. God says that it's so serious that if you go around and you kill somebody, you're going to be put to death. God's going to take your life from you. Let, let me put this in a little bit of perspective for you. Think about it like this. Now, let's see how funny it is to dress up like a serial killer. God, God condemns it, right? What if your child dressed up like somebody that was a, that was a, that was a well-known pedophile? Would that be funny? What about a molester? Is, oh, is that different? All of a sudden, that's different. You know why it's different? Because you're brainwashed. Because you listen to TV and you watch television. And the same people, let me say this too, the same Christians that get mad at this kind of preaching, they get mad when you point out that they're worldly and they're liberal and they're not a fundamentalist. You can go to an independent fundamental Baptist church all you want. That doesn't make you a fundamentalist. Yeah. You know, a fundamentalist is somebody who actually believes the Bible and actually practices the Bible. And the only reason why a person would think that there's a difference in their child dressing up like, you know, like some sort of you know, pedophile or child molester than to dress up like Freddy Krueger is because you've been watching television and you're brainwashed. Amen. That's the only difference. Right. And those same lazy Christians that are willing to go around and walk around door to door and knock on people's doors you know, to get candy are the same Christians that don't go soul winning. Isn't that funny? The same Christians that watch television all the time. See, the reason why your kids are numb to walking around in these neighborhoods and seeing all this wickedness and all this sinful garbage it's because you got them sitting in front of the TV all day. Yeah. That's the reason why they think it's fine in the, in the first place. My daughter, when she sees stuff like that, it scares her and she doesn't want to look at it. You know, right across from our apartment complex, 
is like, you know, they dressed up their door and everything. Not our, our complex, right across from our door. They dressed up their door with all this scary stuff in there. And my son, Elijah, when he walked out, and it's actually very mild compared to what other people put up. They tried to make it friendly, but there's still all these, you know, kid friendly, if you will, because they put like vibrant child colors. That's what they always try to do. They try to put all these vibrant colors to attract kids or make it a little bit more friendly. They, you know, like, de the, like Satan always mixes a lie with the truth. You know, he tries to mix a lie with something that's, you know, <coughs> that's wholesome or that's okay, that's not bad. So they have like purple and orange and all this stuff. And then they have like skulls and everything like that. And the very first my son, well, the first time my son walked out the door, we opened up the door and he's like, and just stopped and just stood there until like somebody else came around and was like, it's all right, buddy. It's okay. And you know, after a little while, he actually walks over there and starts playing with the stuff on that. He like started messing with the skeleton and the skull. He actually took one of the like pumpkins that they had sitting in the front of the door and carried it in our house. And I had to carry it back outside and put it back out there. Your kids get numb to it. And you know how? Because it's in front of their face all the time. Because year after year you take them, you take them out trick-or-treating and there's all this wickedness that you set before their eyes and then they start thinking it's alright. It's normal. It's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 10. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse number 10. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 10, the Bible says, <clears throat> There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that, use, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. <clears throat> or a wizard, or a necromancer. Now watch this. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So notice again, the people that were doing this before, God kicked them out. Just like he said, if you want to eat blood, I have one, I think so, thanks. Just like he said, if you want to eat blood, you're going to be cut off from among your people. Just like he said, you know, if you're going to go around killing people, you know, if you're going to kill whoever smites a man, he shall surely be put to death. These are not just small offenses. You know, these are not just small things. It's not a coincidence that every single character of Halloween that people love to dress up like, all of these characters... All the, what, the one thing that they're known by is just an abomination to God. Yeah. It's something that God hates. It's something that if you do this, God will kick you out of the children of Israel. God threw out and killed the people in the land of Canaan because they were doing this. Now, one thing I want to point out, all these things in this passage, all these are being used synonymous. Now, God will you use words that are synonymous, and even words that are synonymous just in the study of language. They have a tiny bit of a difference. They can have a different angle, but they have they overlap in an area where they are synonymous. Now, some of these, like you know, so you have like, uh, and they start at the very begin at the very beginning. Use it divination, observer of times. Divination is basically being able to predict the future. That's what that word divine means. That's why Joseph said. You know, can, you know, in, in, in uh, Genesis, cannot I divine a man like me divine? He's talking about that he was able to tell prophecies. That's what the word divination means. Observer of times, an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. But all of these are almost exactly the same. They're all, they would all fall into the category of what we would consider sorcery or what, or what we would consider witchcraft. And this is, this is another super well-known character that people just think it's funny to dress up like. You know, they, try, they think it's funny to dress up like a witch. Turn to uh, Exodus chapter number 22, verse number 18, and we'll see again how funny God thinks that it is to be a witch. <clears throat> Look at Exodus chapter number 22, verse number 18. And... <clears throat> Exodus chapter number 22, verse number 18. <clears throat> Exodus chapter number 22, verse number 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Every one of the characters of Halloween, it's, that's why it's a holiday from hell, because every one of the characters 
that people love to dress up like, not only you know, does God say it's an abomination to him, but every one of these characters, God says, I'm going to cut you off from among your people. God said, that just meant, that was actually talking to a Christian when they were to drink blood. That was the most mild punishment that he prescribed. Every other one, he says, you're to be put to death. God says you kill somebody, you're to be put to death. God says you're a witch, you're a familiar spirit, you know, you, you, you uh, deal with familiar spirits. Necromancy, which is like communicating with the dead, almost the exact same thing. God says if you do that kind of stuff, God, God, if God had his way in America, God would go around and he would put witches to death. People that do sorcery to death. And, if, and when I talk about that, if you think in your mind right now that there is no one that's doing real witchcraft, you're again, you're an idiot. Yeah. There are people that do real witchcraft. There are real. And you know why? Again, the same reason why you're either an idiot or you're brainwashed. Because the reason why you think that is because you've been watching television shows about like the good witch. And you've been watching television shows, you know, where they try to act like it's not a big deal. Cartoons where, you know, where the witch is good and things like that. And it just becomes this thing that's just playtime to you. Where you think it's a joke. God doesn't think it's funny. God, you think, you, you honestly could look at me in the face and tell me that God thinks it's funny when, when you dress up your children or you yourself dress up like a character and doing like you're doing something that he says that he puts you to death for that? You think that's funny? You think it's funny to celebrate a holiday like that? That God says, I'll put you to death if you do something like that? Christians are idiots today. They really are. They're dumb and they're, and, or they're brainwashed, one of the two. They don't read their Bible, and they watch television all day long. And then they want to come and try to talk to a Christian that actually reads his Bible all day and try to justify the fact that they one day a year it's all right to just partake of the table of devils. Because that's what they do. Turn to Revelation chapter number 18, verse number 23. <clears throat> Revelation chapter number 18, verse number 23. The whole purpose, it's not, it's not a coincidence that... That these people are deceived because the whole purpose of sorcery is to deceive. That's the goal. That's what sorcery is used for. Look at Revelation chapter number 18, verse number 23. Revelation chapter number 18, look at verse number 3. It says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorcery, the whole purpose of sorcery is to deceive you. Turn to Acts chapter 8 and we'll see it again. It's meant to deceive. And the very first level of deception... That's used the very first step or stage of deception is to where you just start getting comfortable with it. You're not necessarily, you know, you know, uh, participating in sorcery or participating in real witchcraft. But the very first step of sorcery is that you're just comfortable around it. Is that you just kind of put your guard down and you just kind of think, well, either sorcery is not real, or you know, there's good sorcery and there's bad sorcery. Look at Acts chapter eight. Look at verse number eight. Acts chapter number 8, verse number 8. It says, and there, was, and there was great joy in that city, but there was a certain man, but, as in a contrast, there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery, and watch this, and bewitched. Does anybody know what the word bewitched means? That means deceived. He deceived the people. He, it means to, like, manipulate. Or, or uh, turn to 2 Kings chapter number 25, number 21. Or to deceive. There's different stages of deception. <clears throat> God didn't differentiate between a good witch and a bad witch when he said, you know, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Because that's what they, like I said, they try to first get you to accept witchcraft. They try to first get you to accept sorcery and just think that it's all right. Like they call it, you know, black magic and white magic. So there's good magic. God didn't say only put to death you know, a, a, a witch that practices black magic. It's all wicked. The only reason why they call some of it white magic is to try to get you in the door, try to make you think it's all right, try to make you think it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. The whole purpose of sorcery is to deceive you. 
That's the whole, whole entire pur purpose of sorcery. Now, if you remember in the passage, the, the most famous passage where it talks about sorcery, it doesn't use the word sorcery, it used divination, the first one we looked at, Deuteronomy. It used divination, used enchanters. Another word that's not found there, it's in another place, is prognosticators. This isn't only in like the films of today, because a lot of this other Halloween stuff, yeah, it's in films, but those movies don't, like Freddy Krueger movies don't just come out constantly. But like sorcery has just permeated our whole culture. You can walk around, you can go like to a strip mall, you can go to some, you know, some, especially like tourist areas, and there's fortune tellers everywhere. There's palm readers everywhere. This is something that people have just become completely numb to. And they think that every single one of these people are just a con man. Now, I believe there's a lot of their con man. Just like I believe that a lot of Pentecostals are fake speaking in tongues, yeah, you know what a lot of, uh, other, of the other ones are too? They're possessed by devils. That's what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, but a lot of them are faking it. Just like a lot of these, you know, uh, supposed sorcerers and, and, and wizards and, witch, and witches and stuff like that, a lot of them are just trying to make a buck, which it's wrong, obviously. They're just faking it. They're a con man. You know what a lot of them are? A lot of them really are practicing some sort of sorcery. A lot of them really are conjuring up evil spirits and casting spells and things like that. A lot of them really are doing that thing. Do you, you think that God just warned us about this and said, Thou shalt not suffer? Did you know that people that were witches actually used to be put to death in the United States? That was a real law that they would put people to death if you were a witch. If you went around saying you were a witch, they would put you to death. And the people that make, like, on the History Channel, they'll make documentaries about this kind of stuff. And they always try to act like they're just putting these people to death, but they're not really doing any kind of black magic or sorcery or anything like that. That the people were just ignorant at that time. God wasn't ignorant when he said, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Amen. Now, all I guarantee all these people that are the con man, if, you, if the law got passed tomorrow that said that thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, I bet they'd be like, whoa, I was just kidding around, man. I'll find a new profession to make some money at. I'll find something else to do. I guarantee it. But the real witches would keep doing it. The real sorcerers that, that had that power, you know, and that's the third step. That's the th very third step that happens. You're deceived into it because Satan tries to offer you something. Satan tries to show you that power. Just like when Satan, it's always what Satan does. Just like when the devil, the serpent, came to the Garden of Eden, he tried to offer some sort of power, right? Just like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness of Satan, what did he do? Tried to offer him some sort of power. That The, very, the first step you know, to, to getting into sorcery is just thinking it's all right. It's just thinking, oh, it's not that bad, but I don't have anything to do with it. The second step is like actually being buddy-buddy with it, not really practicing it. You actually get, you know, God, it, uh, the devil gets you to step in the door. And the third one is where Satan actually starts showing you power through this. Look at 2 Kings chapter number 21, verse number 5. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments. This is talking about Manasseh. He was a king of, of, uh, of uh, uh, Judah. And he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. You know why it's mentioning the same things over and over again? Just like I said before, these are all being used synonymously. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. God says that witchcraft and stuff like that is an abomination. God says right here, he says that it's wickedness. And if you remember just a minute ago, I, I kind of alluded to this a minute ago. I didn't get to make my finish my point. When we read in Deuteronomy and it named off that whole list of all the wizards, witchcrafts, all of that, the very first thing that it talked about was offering your children unto, un, unto idols or sacrificing your children. Look at what Manasseh was doing again. Look at the beginning of verse number 6. Don't read over that. And he made his son pass through the fire and observe times and enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. And all, all of this is just a glorification of death. That's all that it is. That's why all these people are obsessed with like necromancy. They're obsessed with communicating with the dead. That's why all these people that are in the goth crowd, and the, whatever the emo crowd or emu crowd, whatever it's called, all of these people are just obsessed with death. All they want to do, they want to go to cemeteries, they want to try to communicate with the dead, 
They want to try to, you know, they're obsessed with it. That's why it has a, plays a big, huge part in Halloween. That's why the witch is at the front, you know. Uh, that's why the, that's the very first costume that they offer your child to wear. That's why most of the kids are dressed up like witches and war wizards and warlocks. But they first have to desensitize you. They first have to make you think it's not a big deal by watching, you know, the series of, of Harry Potter or something like that. God doesn't think that stuff's funny. God, and so the, you, you go through these stages. Now, I can think back. I played a lot of sports in my life, and I can think back in high school of the, the people, the types of people that I was friends with, you know, from middle elementary school, middle school, and high school. And I remember people, you know, that would kind of, that would at one point would just kind of switch crowds. And they would start hanging out with a lot of the people that were in like the goth crowd. They would start hanging out with a lot of people that were in those other groups. And I remember when those people would do that, their whole lives would just change. Like they would just start dressing entirely different. You know, they would start doing stuff, you know, like painting their fingernail, fingernails black, dressing all black. You know, just like you wouldn't even be able to recognize like who this person was. They would just, you know, completely just change entirely. That's because there's different levels of this deception. And they become all of a sudden obsessed with, you know, death. They all, they all of a sudden become obsessed with, you know, uh, you know with uh, communicating with the dead. And this stuff is, I have a family member. I'll tell a story real quick. I had a family member. The very, it's one of the, and the reason why I tell this story is because this is a family member that is a very honest family member that would not lie. She was in high school. She's older. When she was in high school, she said that she had a friend on a road that was like kind of part of that crowd. And she was like, hey, you want to play with the Ouija board? She was on a road. It was a small road. There wasn't a lot of friends. So I guess if somebody asked you to play, you're going to play with them. So he's like, hey, you, I have a Ouija board. You want to play with it? But there was a couple of other family members that were there too. My family there was like three of them that lived in the same house. So that friend came over and they got a Ouija board or something. I think it was a Ouija board. And they were playing with a Ouija board. And she said that they first were asking the Ouija board questions and they were like vague questions. And somebody had the idea, I don't know who it was, but somebody had the idea like let's ask a real specific question this time. Let's see if this thing has power. You know, and let's see if there really is any kind of like spiritual aspect to this. And they asked like a really random specific question. There was like, there was a shelf with a bunch of records. And they said, hey, let's ask it how many records are in that shelf and then we'll go over there and count them. And they were like, you know, how, they asked the Ouija board or whatever they were messing with, how many, how many records are in that shelf? And it was like a super random number. It was like 146 or like 166. And then they went over there and counted them and it was exactly... Exactly 146. And my and my my cousin is who this is. Or my yeah, it'd be my cousin. She was like, she said, and she talks about it now, and you can tell like by her demeanor and stuff when she talks about it. She's not kidding. She said she told that person to go away. She never hung out with that person again. And she never wanted to see that Ouija board ever again. She and because that stuff's not a joke. You think it's a joke all the time, but that's exactly what God, that's exactly what the devil does. The devil deceives you first into thinking it's a joke and then you play with it. And then you start messing with it more and more and then you start seeing like, hey, this thing has got some power. Hey, there's really some sort of power here. The devil tries to offer you that sort of power. You know, Manasseh didn't start off, I'm sure, offering his child to idols and offering his children unto Baal. You know, he was obviously went through you know, steps of deception. And Manasseh here is messing with familiar spirits. He's messing with all this type of wizard, wizardry and, war, and witchcraft and stuff like that. That's why these types of kids like to cut themselves. Because death and blood and all goes into the same category. And it's not, and, and people wonder, like, hey, you know, how did that happen? You know, 16-year-old Johnny or whatever, he played sports in the past. He was, he was friendly. He was an active kid. You know, he, he had a lot of friends. All of a sudden, he changed. You know, he started hanging out with a different crowd. And then when he was 16 years old, you know, he smothered his little sister. Because of what, this is the type of situations that happen. You know, he, you start playing with a Ouija board like that. Maybe he's up in his room playing with a Ouija board. And he asks the Ouija board a couple of questions. And maybe one time it answers him. Just like it answered, you know, the devil is who answers you. you you're, when you think you're communicating with the devil all the time, that's Satan. You know, so they, they ask the Ouija board a question and it answers. And then you start kind of trusting in that power. Like, hey, I have a little bit of power. I can use this. And then one night... The Ouija board tells you to go in there and put a pillow over your little six-year-old sister's face. And then it's all on the news and people are like, what in the world happened? We have no idea why, why this happened. And then they say, oh, the kid was in witchcraft, but everybody blows it off. Everybody acts like it's not that big of a deal. Everybody I couldn't have been related to that. 
That it couldn't have had anything to do with that. He was, uh, and, and where you'll hear like a, some kid that says he was hearing voices and he's messing with Ouija boards. He's listening to satanic, all this satanic music and all this, all this garbage. Or these people like are professing like, hey, we worship Satan. That's like the name of their groups. And he's he hearing voices and he's killing people. But it has nothing to do with that. You know what type of people love Halloween the most? These type of people. Yeah. They're the type of people that love Halloween the most. What in the world does a Christian have to do with a type of holiday like that? What in the world? Why? You know, I can't even begin to fathom or begin to understand how especially you would allow your kids to go out in a holiday that is literally a holiday from hell. Everything that is described in the Bible that, that people dress up like is literally, you know, what Satan just just exactly what Satan's army would look like. Exactly what all the devils look like. And then, then you know, all these parents are fine. You know, but my kid dresses up like Buzz Lightyear, so it's so it's okay. The Bible says, set no wicked thing before your eyes. And I don't care if your child dresses up like an angel or dresses up like anything else. It doesn't matter to me at all. You are partaking in, of the table of devils. If you are taking your kids out and you are allowing them to participate in a wicked holiday like Halloween. And if somebody hears all of this and they, and they listen to everything that I just said and they seriously still try to say that it's all a coincidence... You're, you, you're just, you are just, you know what the truth is and you're lying to yourself. That's what it is. You just want to keep sacrificing things on the devils is what it is. Go to, turn to Colossians chapter number one. <clears throat> Colossians chapter number one. <clears throat> we'll end here. This, we'll conclude here in Colossians chapter number one. I just thought of this, so if a person would say, how is it a holiday from hell? Well, you have this, hell gets cast into outer darkness, right? What is, what is the number one theme of, of Halloween? It's black. It's darkness, right? It's a holiday from hell. <clears throat> all the characters or all the, types of, uh, all the types of people reprobate serial killers, you know where those people are? They're in hell. Yep. That's why it's a holiday from hell. All these types of things are acts you know, that not only like, uh, you know, a normal person will get into. A lot of this kind of stuff is like the Bible calls it an abomination. It's really wicked. It's not just you know, your average sin that you can get into. Look at Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 12. <clears throat> Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now notice what it said. That he made us, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So us as saints, we're supposed to be partakers of light. Look at the next verse. Not of darkness. Look at the next verse. Who hath translated, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. A Christian has zero business doing, you know, practicing anything that has to do with Halloween. I'm not against doing things on Halloween to try to keep your kids away from it. I'm against celebrating the, the holiday and professionally say, hey, we're, you know, we're going to celebrate Halloween. I don't care even if you just invite people over to your house and they all dress up like good characters, but you say, that, hey, we're celebrating Halloween. You know, I would stay as far away from dressing up like anything on that day because I don't want to have anything to do with them. Come out from among them and be separate. And if you think that it's impossible for a Christian to fall into this type of stuff, Saul went to the, went to the witch when he was desperate and God wouldn't speak to him anymore. He went to the witch and he, you know, he tried to speak to the witch to get the witch to bring up. And you know what? She had real power. It wasn't a joke. She, was, she really was able to bring up you know, Samuel from the dead. So all these people aren't kidding. It's not anything to play with. You know, it's real. There's a real power, and it's a satanic power. And Halloween, you know, it's a holiday from hell, and if you, are, if you are participating in it, like the Bible says, you are partaking with devils. We are, like, like the Bible says right here, we've been translated, you know, and, you know into the, into the, into the uh, kingdom of His dear Son, the Bible says. God, you know, took us out from darkness. God translated us out from darkness and made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We should have nothing to do with a holiday you know, that represents hell is what it represents. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word and that, uh, and that your word is light and that it's not darkness and that it can shed light on even you know, uh, situations like this where just the whole country is deceived. You know, the whole world practically is deceived on things like this. And they just, you know, they, they think that it's, that it's funny to celebrate a wicked holiday like this. And we thank you, dear Lord God, for all the truth that's, that's in your word and that your truth is the light, dear Lord God. And we thank you for uh, just all the commandments that are given to us so that we can so we can find out what is right and what is wrong even when people try to deceive us and we, even when people try to confuse us. We ask you just to bless the rest of the day, dear Lord, and I ask you to bless the services to come and uh, keep us safe and we love you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.